Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting quick tutorial. A little while ago I released a rather bloody video explaining the important difference between Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. If you haven't seen it yet you can check it out by clicking on this link up here in the top left hand corner. To recap, Premiere Pro is great for cutting your entire film project together sequentially and Adobe After Effects is great when you want to add visual effects and composite many different visual elements together into a single shot. However, when working on your own film projects, you will likely have need for both. Suddenly the question becomes, well, how do you actually get the files from one program into the other? What is the best way to work with both of them, to connect these two programs together? There is no need to fry your household electronics because in this tutorial I will show you how to best work between Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. First off, there is no best way to work between Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. There is no should and shouldn't. There are simply a number of different options that are available to you to move your work between Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects and what is best for you will simply depend on your requirements and your personal preferences. In this tutorial I will cover all of the options that are available to you so you can choose which ones you like best and which ones are most suitable to the way you work. This is going to be a low intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you have used both Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects before and that you are fairly comfortable with both of them. But now, before I talk your ears off, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the wonderland that is Adobe Premiere Pro and the sequence that I have opened here is actually my original edit for our Halloween special The Ring. If you have seen the short film you will know that almost every single clip in this entire sequence had some form of visual effects applied to it, so working between Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects was extremely important for this project. The reason I am starting with Premiere Pro is that usually you will edit together at least a rough version of your entire project using Adobe Premiere Pro, then use Adobe After Effects to add some visual effects, bring it back into Premiere Pro and then do the final export. At least that's what I do. There are three different ways that you can get your clips into Adobe After Effects to apply some visual effects and then bring them back into your Premiere project. The first one is extremely simplistic. You can simply export selected clips from your timeline as video files, import them into Adobe After Effects, apply your visual effects, export them from After Effects and bring them back into your Premiere project. For example, let's say I do want to work on this particular clip here to insert a screen into the TV. I could simply place the playhead over this clip, press X to mark the clip, then press Ctrl M to bring up the export media dialog. Personally I really like the H.264 codec but obviously use whatever you want to. And then let's set an output location and file name, let's call this TV insert base, hit OK. And under the video settings I usually make sure that my target bitrate and my maximum bitrate are really nice and jacked up because obviously I'm going to export this into After Effects and then back from After Effects into Premiere and I don't want to lose too much quality. Then hit export and let Premiere do its thing. Once the export is completed let's load up Adobe After Effects and let's start a new project. Let's bring in the clip that we have just exported from Premiere Pro and let's use it to create a new composition. And here's our clip, ready to have some visual effects applied to it. For the sake of this tutorial, let's keep this nice and simple and create a new solid. Let's make this one red. Turn off the visibility and let's mask out a rough shape around the screen. Re-enable the visibility on the solid and let's just pretend that we did an amazing job inserting a screen into the TV. To bring this clip back into Premiere Pro, let's go into our composition and press Ctrl M to bring up the render queue. Select your favorite output module. And let's define an output path and a file name. Let's call this TV insert final. Hit OK. And let's render this clip out. Once we're done, let's jump back into Premiere Pro and let's import the clip that we've just exported. Here it is, TV insert final. And let's bring it into our sequence and I actually like to place it on top of my original clip just so that I don't destroy my original edit. And here it is, our final shot with the visual effects in our Premiere project. 
This approach is rather simplistic, but it's not without benefits. For one, it is really simple and it makes it really easy to share the file that you've exported from Premiere Pro with anyone else working on your project. Those people can then easily add the visual effects they need, do an export from After Effects and send you back the final file for you to bring it back into your Premiere project. However, there are also a lot of disadvantages. For one, it is rather cumbersome, especially if you have to adjust the length of the composition or add different visual effects, you always have to re-export and re-import all of the video files. Additionally, because this clip goes through two additional export phases, it's quite easy to accidentally introduce compression artifacts and loss of quality just because it keeps getting encoded. So while this is an option, this is certainly not the way that I would prefer to do it. Let's delete the clip again so we are back to our original edit. The way that I personally prefer to work, and this is option number two, is to simply copy and paste the clips directly from your Premiere sequence into Adobe After Effects. Let's again assume that we want to work on this particular shot and insert a screen into the TV. I can simply come into my sequence, select my clip. I can also select multiple clips if I wanted to, but let's just select the one. Press Ctrl C to copy it. Then go over into Adobe After Effects and create a new composition. I am going to call this one TV Insert and make sure that your width and height as well as your frame rate and your pixel aspect ratio match the settings of your sequence in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's hit OK. Make sure you're at the very start and then simply press Ctrl V to paste the clips that you have copied from Premiere Pro directly into your composition. Now you will notice that this layer doesn't actually start until 5 seconds and 10 frames in. And the reason that is happening, if we quickly jump back into Premiere Pro, is that the clip in our sequence does start at 5 seconds and 10 frames in. So After Effects is simply maintaining the timing of this clip. If that's not what you want, you can simply restrict the work area to the duration of the clip and then simply trim the comp to the work area. And personally, I always do this. And then all you have left is the clip that you've copied from Premiere Pro. Now we can go to town in After Effects and create an equally awful screen replacement. Maybe this time we'll go with a really slimy green. And let's mask this out. Cool, good enough. And to get this clip back into Premiere Pro, we are going to follow the same mythology as for option one. We are going to export it. So let's press Ctrl M to bring up the render queue. Let's delete our original clip. Let's again set the output module. And if I jump in here for a second, under format options, I have set my basic video settings quality to 100% to minimize any compression artifacts that After Effects might introduce when exporting this clip. And OK, and let's set the output file name. Let's call this TV Insert Final 2. And let's render this out. Let's return to Premiere Pro and let's import our clip. There it is, TV Insert Final 2. And let's drag it into our composition on top of the clip that we've added the visual effects to. And there's our clip, nice green screen in the middle of our shot. The reason I prefer this method so much to option one is that for one, there's one less export step, but it's also a lot easier to get your clips from Premiere Pro into After Effects to begin with. Also, and this does happen from time to time, assume that I wanted to extend the original clip before we added the visual effects to it just by a little bit. Now, the visual effects clip is too short. However, I can easily come back into Adobe After Effects and here's the entire clip. Let's bring up the composition settings and let's make this composition a second longer. Let's zoom out a little bit and all I now have to do is simply extend the footage layer as well as all my visual effects. The reason that this works is that this layer in my composition actually references the same footage that my Premiere Pro project references. So they're essentially pointing to the same file. So any extensions I do in my Premiere project, I can replicate in my After Effects composition to make sure that the clips match up. However, to apply any changes to this composition, I will still have to render it out again and bring it back into Premiere Pro. Now, option number three does not require for you to export any intermediate files at all. Let's go back to Premiere Pro and delete our visual effects clip. And now, in your Premiere project, you can simply right click the clip that you want to apply visual effects to and select replace with After Effects composition. You can't see this, but After Effects is actually blinking at me. So if I jump back into Adobe After Effects, you can see that a new linked composition has automatically been created for you and it contains the exact clip that we've replaced in Adobe Premiere Pro. 
Let's jump back to Premiere Pro for a second. And in your sequence, you will see that the clip has now been replaced with a new item. This item links directly to the After Effects composition using Dynamic Link. That means that right here on our timeline, Premiere Pro will render the contents of the composition that we have in Adobe After Effects. That means that I can go into Adobe After Effects, create a new solid in my composition. Maybe this time we go with a bright yellow. And again, let's do a horrible job at masking out this screen. Re-enable our solid layer. And now if I save my After Effects project and come back into Premiere Pro, there's our yellow screen. Premiere Pro is now directly rendering the contents of our After Effects composition into our sequence. So we now have a live link between Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. If we now make any changes to our composition, for example, let's add some text into the scene, save our After Effects project and come back into Premiere Pro, bam, it automatically updates. And if we now export this project, Premiere Pro will render out this After Effects composition and this clip with all of the visual effects that we've added. Now, a lot of people have asked me why I personally prefer option two. And the reason I do is because while Dynamic Link is really great and it makes it amazing to work with Premiere Pro and After Effects in really smooth conjunction, rendering After Effects compositions can be really, really slow. And the more After Effects compositions you include on your timeline in Premiere Pro, the slower the whole project will play back. When I work in Premiere Pro, I really want to be focused on the editing itself, on timing everything nicely, and for that I need my sequence to play smoothly. Therefore, while I do understand the value of having your After Effects compositions live rendered within your sequence, I much prefer exporting my videos from Adobe After Effects and then bringing them into Premiere Pro as video files. This way, Premiere Pro just deals with plain video files, playback will remain nice and smooth, and my editing workflow remains unimpeded. Now, one last thing before I let you go, simply because I do get asked this question quite a bit. Let's say you have replaced a clip on your timeline with an After Effects composition. For whatever reason, you don't want this visual effects anymore or the renders a little bit too slow or you just want to return to the original footage. You essentially want to unreplace your composition back with the original clip. If you're lucky and you haven't closed your project, you may be able to simply undo the change. However, that may not be possible. But there are a couple of ways that you can get your original clip back. The easiest way that I have found is to actually delete your clip from your sequence, jump over into After Effects and open up the link composition, select the footage layer and copy it with Ctrl C, go back to Premiere Pro and go to the beginning of where you inserted your composition and press Ctrl V to basically paste that original clip from the composition in After Effects back into your Premiere sequence. Personally, however, I would recommend that if you are intending on replacing a clip in your sequence with an After Effects composition, you make a copy of that clip first. You can simply select your clip, hold down Alt and then drag up to create a copy of the video layer and then replace the copy with the After Effects composition. This way, if at any point in time you want to return to the original footage, you can simply select the link composition and delete it from your sequence. And that's all there is to it. Now that you know all of the options that are available, you can decide for yourself which ones you like best and which ones you want to integrate into your workflow. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, as always, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.